Hello everyone and welcome back to the 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament. Uh, it's round 22, so the penultimate round. Uh, it's Svetozar Gligoric versus Bobby Fischer. Now, it's been a wild tournament so far, only two more rounds to go. And uh, after, you know, uh, having a, a couple of winning streaks and a couple of tough breaks, uh, Fischer is now again on a winning streak. He defeated uh, uh, five, of the, five of his previous opponents. And now he faces uh, the, the strongest Yugoslavian Grandmaster, Svetozar Gligoric which will be uh, definitely a, a very interesting game to you as, uh, again, Fisher will go for the Benoni. But before we uh, head into that, we do have a nice photo challenge. So best of luck to everyone. Uh, who is the person, uh, the chess player in the photo here? There you have it. Uh, it's a very nice photo by David Lada. And uh, she did say on her Twitter profile that this photo made her realize that she is taking her chess tournaments way too seriously. And uh, in uh, addition, you will get extra points if you figure out why she is uh, in the photo challenge today. I will give you a little hint. It is uh, due to her recent achievement. So there you have it. Now let's uh, check out the, this game. Gligoric opens with d4. Uh, we have knight to f6, c4, e6. Uh, so far an Indian game, knight to c3, and now uh, again Fisher goes for the Benoni defense. d5, uh, this is the standard idea, uh, uh, advancing uh, the d pawn. Uh, captures, captures, and d6. Knight to f3, g6, e4, bishop to g7, bishop to e2, and Fisher castles. Uh, so Gligoric castles, and rook to e8, attacking d4 pawn. And here we have knight to d2, a standard idea, and now both of the knights are guarding the e4 pawn. Uh, knight b to d7, preparing to bring the knight into the center via knight e5. Uh, a4, uh, always a useful move against the Benoni to prevent any future expansions on the queen side. Uh, knight to e5, and uh, this knight to e5 move is always uh, very interesting if you're a Benoni player. Uh, because of course you have to wonder, uh, can white push e f4? If white can push f4, then there's no good reason to actually play knight e5. Uh, but here, and uh, it's a pretty standard position uh, for the Benoni, so you should probably uh, know that it's okay to play knight to e5. Because if you push f4 here, then knight to g4 will be a very nice move for black. Uh, you're threatening knight to e3, the fork the queen and the rook also uh, the bishop is not defending d3 square as there is a knight on d2 and you can't play something like knight to c4 uh, because you have to keep protecting uh, the e4 pawn as it is attacked twice so you would have to capture here and after knight captures again you're threatening the same idea okay now white can go something like uh, knight f3 uh, but then black can go f5 and black achieves pretty much everything black hopes for when playing the benoni defense after captures captures it's a wonderful position to play uh, for black. So after knight to e5, we have queen to c2, Gligoric uh, adds additional protection to d4 pawn, and now f4 will definitely be an idea. So Fisher stops it, g5. Uh, a peculiar move, but uh, it seems to be working in this position. Uh, knight to f3, Fisher captures, knight captures on f3, bishop captures on f3, and now h6. Uh, a bold expansion on the queen side from Fisher, saying that this is perfectly fine. Uh, bishop to d2, simply continuing development, uh, h6, and now bishop back to e2. Uh, we have queen to e7, uh, rook a to e1, uh, indirectly defending the e4 pawn, because now if you capture it, the knight captures, knight captures, uh, you will get queen captures, and then bishop to d3 uh, attacks the queen, guards the h7 square, and there's nothing black can do here. If you capture, you lose the queen. Uh, it's game over. If you move the queen, let's say queen here, you get rook captures. The h7 square is not available. Uh, completely uh, winning position for white. So after rook a to e1, uh, queen to e5. Now Fisher is uh, uh, ready to counter f4 with queen to d4 check. So getting out of the way with tempo. Uh, we have king to h1. Uh, and now queen to d4. The queen has infiltrated uh, uh, white's position very nicely here, uh, but it can also get uh, very dangerous here. Uh, we have f3, adding further protection to d4 pawn, and here knight to h5. A very nice idea by Fisher, preparing knight to f4, maybe even knight g3 in some variations, uh, but uh, this is definitely the critical, one of the critical moments of the game. Uh, here, uh, the queen is very nicely placed on d4, but it's also a very dangerous square for the queen, uh, because here, uh, the best move would be knight to d1, threatening bishop to c3 uh, to win Fisher's queen, as it would have no, no squares left uh, to go to. But then bishop to d7, attacking the a4 pawn, so now bishop to c3 doesn't make all that much sense, queen can simply capture on a4, 
but after b3 defending, then Fisher would simply go back, create some breeding space for the queen, and all would be well. Uh, but Gligorich, uh, for some reason, thought that he can... Uh, trap the queen here or perhaps he didn't think that perhaps he simply thought that it was okay to give up two pieces for the rook so he played knight to b5 a very nice idea uh, the queen is now under attack and the same idea does not work here bishop to c3 will be a threat the queen can be captured here if you move the queen back then knight to c7 uh, forks the rooks and you lose the game here so what can you do here after gligorich plays knight to b5 uh, well, Fisher simply took the knight. A captures uh, uh, on b5. And now uh, bishop to c3 doesn't work right away uh, because queen can now capture on a4. So first bishop captures on b5 and now uh, bishop to c3 uh, again becomes a threat and of course uh, the rook on e8 is undefended. So here, okay, if you capture here then that, that really makes no sense. White will simply capture the undefended rook on e8. Uh, so Fisher moved the queen back. Queen e5. Now we have bishop to c3 attacking the queen. Queen does have a square now, queen e7. And bishop captures on e8, grabbing the undefended rook. Uh, we have queen captures on e8, and now bishop captures on g7. King captures on g7, and now uh, we have uh, b4 uh, trying to bust open here, but uh, doesn't, really, doesn't really give black all that much problems. C captures on b4 was played, a Gligorich goes queen to b2 check. Queen e5, Fisher immediately offers a trade of queens. Uh, queen captures on b4 and now knight to f4. Uh, Fisher is now threatening knight to d3. This would uh, fork the queen and the rook and of course win the game. Uh, so rook to d1, Gligorich prevents it and now we have b6. Uh, Fisher offers the b6 pawn so he can capture the a4 pawn and this is... Uh, the best uh, thing for Gligorich in this position. For example, queen captures, rook captures, uh, but it also uh, contains a little trap Fisher set for Gligorich because now if Gligorich went for this and played queen to c6 uh, with the idea that he will win a piece here, the rook cannot go back as the queen is also guarding the a8 square, uh, then Fisher wins uh, instantly with queen to b2. And there is no defense against queen captures on g2 checkmate. You can prolong it, for example, rook g1, but then comes bishop to h3, piling up <laughs> on the g2 pawn. And after you capture the bishop, as there is no other move, then rook to a2 is coming, and now no piece can block queen captures on h2 checkmate. So a very nice idea, this b6 move by Fischer, trying to, you know, get Gligorich to capture, capture, and then go queen c6. Uh, but probably in time trouble Gligorich uh, decides not to go for this and uh, perhaps he even saw this but he didn't like the position even after just uh, ex exchanging pawns. Uh, so here he played rook to f2. Uh, but unfortunately for Gligorich rook to f2 is a losing move. So feel free to pause the video here and uh, continue Bobby Fischer's uh, legendary winning streak and uh, you know get him a win, uh, in <laughs> a sixth win in a row uh, in the Palma de Mallorca 1970 Interzonal Tournament. Uh, I will give it a couple of seconds if you want to decide whether you want to do it or not. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you have just uh, continued Bobby Fischer's legendary winning streak. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, here Fischer played knight to d3. Uh, once you see it, it all becomes apparent. Now the queen and rook are forked. Uh, you will definitely lose at least the exchange here. Uh, because if you capture, then you get queen to a1 check. And uh, the king has nowhere to go. And uh, however you, you try and block this, uh, you can see that uh, <laughs> no piece can uh, guard the other piece uh, and vice versa. So after you give up all of your pieces, it will uh, in the end be checkmate. So after knight to d3, uh, Gligorich captured on b6. We have knight captures with check, queen captures, and now que rook captures on a4. And this is now completely resignable. Uh, uh, Gligorich is up a, a whole bishop. Uh, uh, Fischer is up a whole bishop. Uh, Gligorich has a pawn for, for a piece. So you can easily resign the game here. Uh, but, you know, I guess it's better that... Uh, history remembers this game that uh, you know you lost the Bobby Fisher in 30 in 37 moves then in 30 moves I guess so uh, King to g1 uh, we have rook to a1 Fisher now wants to trade rooks uh, Queen to e1 uh, preparing to capture the rook on a1 uh, rook to a2 and now Queen to g3 offering a trade of Queens uh, Fisher avoids it although it's perfectly fine to capture it uh, Queen to b2 we have h4 and now simply rook to a1 and uh, it was in this position on move 35 that uh, Gligorich uh, finally decided to resign the game. 
So yeah, uh, that's uh, uh, round 22 of the 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament. Uh, yet another great victory for, for Bobby Fischer, although this game is uh, way, way below uh, Gligoric's skill level. Uh, first, uh, you know, not going after that knight d1 move, rather he tried knight b5 and then uh, either he blundered it or he thought that maybe he could push for something with uh, uh, with a rook against two pieces and then in the end uh, that that rook to uh, rook move that blundered the exchange uh, again uh, way way below Gligoric's uh, skill level. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's uh, a lot of a lot of authors and a lot of uh, grandmasters said that uh, Fisher won, <laughs> won the 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament by simply, you know, it's like he psych psychologically impacted his opponents that they they played poorly against him. Uh, but it is often Mikhail Tal often said that uh, you know uh, fortune favors the strong and it always seems that uh, you know. Uh, the stronger player is lucky. He's not lucky. He's just playing better every move, and then if you if you don't play as well as him every move, then you will lose the game, of course, at some point. But you know, you should remember that fortune always favor favors the strong. So yeah, uh, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it and that you're enjoying the coverage of the 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament. So far, we have one more round to go, uh, vers uh, Fisher versus Pano, and uh, that's it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Chris Buckland, Mario Murat, uh, Jacques Bivma, uh, Joseph Reeder, and uh, Michael Acevedo for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. And uh, for those of you who are interested, uh, today is uh, the Boomsday Project. So uh, later uh, at some 9, 7 p.m. Central European summertime, uh, I will be opening some, some packs and perhaps uh, making a, a nice Hearthstone video if any of you are interested in my Hearthstone channel as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, and I wanted to invite you today is Yozaro's birthday. So I will we'll put a link in the description below. It will be the first thing you will see. Uh, it's uh, his latest video. So uh, feel free to check it out and congratulate him. Uh, or uh, rather wish him a happy birthday. So yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, thank you all for watching and uh, I'll see you soon.